A wire carrying a current of I in the counterclockwise direction is bent into a semicircle of radius R and is oriented perpendicular to uniform magnetic field of magnetic field strength B, and that's going up. What is the magnetic force acting on the entire wire? And we'll be using the equation for the force, IL cross B. We're going to break this in two pieces. First, we'll just consider the horizontal piece. And what's the length of that? Well, it's 2R, right? Twice the radius. So the magnetic force is IL cross B. You use the right-hand rule, and you find that the magnetic force is out of the page. Right? You put your four fingers in the direction of the current. You face your palm up, and you curl your fingers in that direction. You stick your thumb out, it's coming out of the page. Then we do the magnitudes, okay? So that'll be the magnitude of the current times the length, which is 2R, times B, strength and magnetic field, and what's the angle between the current and the magnetic field? Well, that's 90 degrees. So you get 2IRB. So that's the magnitude of the magnetic force on the horizontal segment, and the direction of the force is out of the page. Next, consider the semicircle. First of all, let's find the direction. Well, let's take up here. The current's going in this direction, so we point our four fingers in that direction. The magnetic field is up, so we face our palm up, and it turns out this time the magnetic force is into the page. And you can put your hand anywhere on the curve and you'll get the same result. Now, the semicircle is curving, okay? So we're going to break it into small line segments, DL, calculate the force on each small segment, and then add them together to find the total force by performing a line integral. Why do we have to take every little piece of the semicircle? Why couldn't we have just multiplied its length, which is pi r, times the strength of the magnetic field? The whole bit is this cross product right here. When we did the straight line, what did you notice about the relationship between the direction of B and the direction of I? It was always 90 degrees. However, on the semicircle, here's your I or your DL. That one's perpendicular, that's good. But look at this one over here. Here's the I or DL, the length vector. And the magnetic field makes a different angle. So that's true for every single point on the semicircle. So we're going to take the force on every little segment DL, and then we're going to have to add them all together that's going to be integration, right? So let's just erase this. And our next step here is to replace the cross product because we're interested in finding the magnitude here. We already know the direction, but we need to know the magnitude. Whenever you have a cross product, you can just take the magnitudes. So you got I, DL, and B, and then the sine of the angle between B and DL. So we have DFB equals IB sine theta DL. Well, we've got theta and we have DL. We need to get those variables the same. Now we're going to use the relationship between DL, and I'll just draw a separate triangle here. Here's DL, right here. Here's theta, and here's R. It's kind of our radiant definition, isn't it? So DL is equal to R D theta. And I'm sorry, I should have put a D here. That's for that particular angle. So now I have the force on any little piece DL is IRB sine theta D theta. I'm now going to integrate that. And the key now is to get the correct limits of integration. Well, we started here and went over to there. So if theta is the angle between this vector R, okay, and DL, I'm integrating from 0, right here is 0, all the way over to 180. And that's what I put in for the limits. I took out IRB because they're constant. You integrate sine theta, you get minus IRB cosine theta, evaluate it between pi and 0. You do the little math then, and then the force is 2 IRB. We find that the magnitudes of the force on the semicircle, this piece here, and the horizontal line are exactly equal to IRB. 
Using the right hand rule, we found out that the force on the horizontal line is out of the page. Okay, force on the horizontal. And the force on the semicircle is into the page. Force, semicircle. So the sum of the forces on the two segments is zero. Adding these two integrals together is equivalent to performing a line integral about the entire closed loop, which is a semicircle. It results in a value of zero. This is an illustration, although certainly not a comprehensive proof, of the net magnetic force on a closed circuit carrying loop is zero. The magnetic force on a wire of any shape, for example, this semicircle piece here, is equal to the force on a straight wire connecting the two endpoints of the shape. So that would be this, right? The force on that guy is equal to the force on this guy.